Travis Fulgham had a great game. I mean, Tra Travis Fulgham really came on the scene. If you're wondering why I keep seeing Travis Fulgham so much, it's not to drive views. It's not because the YouTube algorithm might pick up on his name and push the content out there. Not at all. That's 100% not why I keep saying the word Travis Fulgham. Not the word, I'm sorry. The name, Travis Fulgham. All right, y'all. Let's get it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this. Once again, guys, my name is Stephen Heider, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, y'all, today's topic. Look, it's going to kind of be about Travis Fulgham. I mean, I'm not doing a film breakdown yet on them, guys. I'm just really going to be looking over our personnel grouping frequencies from week five and on the season now. But there was a big emergence in production from the wide receiver position this past Sunday. And we all know the storyline. Travis Fogum emerged on the scene. 10 catches, 151 yards, right, and a touchdown. Huge production out of the wide receiver position. I can't remember the last time we had a receiver that threw up this type of numbers. It's been a long time, I can say that. Um, there was something that emerged out of this as we talk about personnel group and frequencies for week five. And that was, we went really, really dominant 11, man. Now, I will say that the past couple of weeks since Goddard went down, we've been more dominant 11, man, than 12, man. But this game in particular, the disparity was very large. So, for week five, 11, man personnel, 43 plays accounting for 75% of offensive snaps, okay? 12, man personnel utilization. 12 plays, accounting for 21% of snaps. 13-man personnel, two, you know, one play accounting for 2% of snaps. And then 20-man personnel, two running backs, three receivers, no tight ends. 2% or one play. So overall, 14 plays that were not run out of 11-man personnel compared to 43 plays in 11-man personnel. 75% of our snaps, 11-man, 25% through three other formations, basically 12-man, 13-man, 20-man, heavily being 12-man out of those three, clearly. That was a big difference, man. We saw a, a really large emergence come out of the wide receiver group because of this, right? I mean, I think we got to discuss this going forward because I think Fogo makes the conversation very interesting because at some point, we're going to get a lot healthier at receiver. And if Fogo is this good, it's going to do a lot for, for Carson Wentz in that receiver room. Imagine having Fulgham and Alshon, two guys with pretty big catch radiuses. Fulgham, where you can now move him all over the place. And we know Alshon has the ability to play a little tall slot, too. But Fulgham can play your X, your Y, and your Z. He can be really moved all over the place, okay? You know, imagine when you get Rager back, another guy that you can move between the X, the Y, and the Z, right? You get Djax back, who, yes, Djax hasn't been the same, but at the end of the day, Djax can still burn you if you're not careful. Man, when the pieces come back, I mean, I, I look, Hightower is definitely, he, you know, he's got struggles as a rookie. There's no doubt about it. Like, I did a video way back when I did my draft profile on Hightower, and, and the one criticism I really gave Hightower was is that at the contested, you know, catch point, there are times to where the athleticism shows up, but it's, it's a weird hand-and-eye coordination thing to where he just misjudges the ball. And he's even had some where they were fairly easy contested catches that he just he didn't bring down. So it doesn't always look good. As, like I think, in my opinion, Hightower looks really good when you're getting vertical. You know, when you hit him on balls where he's got to track the ball and stuff like that, I think Hightower's a lot better at that. The contested catch stuff, I think he needs more development on. He's a really good route runner. We, we all see that. I mean, that's the one thing we can say about this kid is this kid gets separation through his route running. Um, there's a lot of positive coming back, right? And look... By no means am I crazy enough to say that we wouldn't revert back to more 12, man, once Goddard gets back. You're going to play your best players on the field. And Goddard and Nurse are still your, you know, two of your best players in your receiving threats. But I do think we're here to see more 11-man throughout the year. I think I think that that conversation we had preseason when we talked about, you know, evolving this offense away from a 12-man a little more into 11-man, I think the reality is now setting in with a guy like Fulgham starting to emerge. You know, you still got Greg Ward Jr. who just got left out of the conversation I just had, right? And you got Rager, you got Alshon, you got Djax, you got, you know, you know, Hightower. We got all these guys. Like, 
I do think that there something is emerging here, okay? And why I think this week was so pivotal is that that 75% of plays we played last week took the season numbers. And for the first time in, I don't know how long, guys, probably since some point in 2018, you know, got a rookie year, we have now played more 11 men than 12 men on the season, okay? So for the season, the season numbers are 49%, 164 plays being run out of 11 men, compared to 12 men's 157 plays, or 47%, so 49 to 47%, 1% 1 out of 21 men, 1% 1 out of 22 men, 1% 1 out of uh, two-man personnel, 1% uh, out of 13-man personnel, and then one play out of 20-man personnel. So, obviously we have, if you look at it, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 plays on the season. I got a feeling that number's going to change. I think they may have missed some stuff here. 9 plays out of the season coming out of two back sets. We've had 3 plays on the season out of uh, out of a, our version of the Jumbo, which is 13-man, basically. And then one play out of two-man personnel. Um... <sighs> It's interesting, guys. I mean, we see there there's an, an evolution taking place with the Eagles offense now. And it, it I don't know what it's going to look like going forward. I can give you some numbers on, on targets from some of these offenses, and I, I can tell you where these offenses rank in terms of the production, but in terms of targets on the season from wide receivers, okay? Allen Robinson from Chicago leads the league. Amari Cooper's next. Um, D-Hop is after that. Keenan Allen, Calvin Ridley. Um, Robbie Anderson, Terry McLaurin, Adam Thielen, Tyler Boyd, Darius Slayton, CeeDee Lamb, OBJ, DK, Tyler Lockett, DJ Moore, Emmanuel Sanders, Cooper Cup, Marquise Brown, Mike Evans, and Stephon Diggs are your top 20 receivers in terms of targets, okay? I didn't use yards because I don't think yards are, are the better marker for what we're discussing today, so... Here's, here's some things I'm seeing here in, into the larger conversation about Fulgham and the offense. Out of these 20 players, four of them come from offenses that are not 11-man dominant, meaning 11-man is not their dominant formation, okay? D-Hop in Arizona, Adam Thielen in Minnesota, OBJ in Cleveland, and Marquise Hollywood Brown from Baltimore, okay? Those four guys kind of kick that trend. And if you're just wondering, like, on the season, like, who are the dominant 11-man offenses? Dallas leads the league with Cleveland, or Cincinnati, I'm sorry, Cincinnati and Dallas at 78%, 11-man personnel. Kansas City's next at 74%, then the Jets at 74 Washington at 73 Denver at 73 the Rams at 72 Jacksonville at 72 Seattle and Buffalo at 71 and then the Los Angeles Chargers at 70%. Those are your 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 NFL teams who have played 70% or more of their snaps out of 11-man personnel. Then you got two teams that at any point could cross into this conversation in Indianapolis at 69% and Houston at 69%, guys. Those are your dominant, clearly dominant 11-man offenses. And then in contrast, who are your not dominant 11-man offenses? So Green Bay has only played 36% of their snaps out of 11-man. That number is so crazy because Green Bay is under 100 snaps on the season, meaning they have not played 100 snaps out of 11 men on the season. They only have 96 snaps, okay? Cleveland, 38%. They're next. Minnesota, 39%. They would be next. Uh, San Francisco, 42% would be next. Arizona, 46% would be next. Tennessee, 47% would follow. Keep in mind, Tennessee is also under 100 plays on the season, but they've also played less games. The Las Vegas Raiders are next at 48%. Baltimore follows suit at 49%. And then Philly at 49% as well. Those are your least amount. But we can see a trend here with the Eagles, right? The Eagles, 11-man is rising. That 12-man is falling. And now that ratio of how often we're playing 11-man is going up. Now we're up into almost 50% utilization out of 11-man personnel. Um, Travis Fogelman had a big game, guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm just going to be real with you. I can see some big decisions on the horizon here, guys. All right, y'all. These are my thoughts on the situation here. I gave you a lot of advanced analytics here, some stuff to kind of look over and to think about. And I'll ask you a question, guys. What do you think going forward? What do you think going forward about this 11-man personnel utilization conversation? Like, do you think Fogum now changes that conversation? Do you think getting back a healthy Alshon Jeffrey? Getting back a healthy De Deshaun Jackson, Jalen Rager. Do you think these guys are going to completely change that conversation around 11-man utilization to 12-man utilization? Because let's be real. 
It may be harder to bracket guys like Ertz or Goddard, even though it may reduce their snaps if you've got better threats on the edges. I think the one thing that teams are going to realize now is, hey, we can't just only pay attention to Miles Sanders, and we can't only just pay attention to Zach Ertz, because I don't know who that Fulgham guy is, but he seems legit. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here.